back to the Late Late Show, you cheeky wee sausages. My, my first guest tonight is a legendary singer and performer who created some of rock and roll's most memorable anthems, including Schools Out and I'm 18. He's on the soundtrack of the new film Rock School and has an album and tour called Dirty Diamonds coming to America this summer. Please welcome the one and only Alice Cooper, everybody. <laughs> Got in trouble f about me for you know at least once in their life. Yeah. I can tell. Hey, you know the last time I saw you was Glasgow Apollo, and you hung yourself. So I'm glad to see you're all right. Yeah, you, you, know, you know, if that trick doesn't work, yeah. you can only really do it once, did, and then it's. <laughs> did, 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 do you ever have? Because you used to hang yourself and chop your head off. And... Well, the guillotine is actually more dangerous than the hanging because the blade really only misses me by about that much. And uh, which song was? I don't remember the guillotine, but yeah, I was kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> The one thing, the one thing about Glasgow now, uh, the first time I ever played there was at the Apollo, yeah. and uh, that was the sister city of Detroit. I That's think. right, it is. It's very like Detroit. Rock and yeah. roll. The people there like to rock and roll, drink and fight. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And not necessarily in that order. No, not all at, at the no. same time. They'd be sitting there going, "Ah, oh, isn't he great?" Boom! Yeah. They hit each other and, "Ah, oh, yeah. yeah!" Boom! And that, and that could be your mother. <laughs> <laughs> That was tough. Tough city. But I love that. Love that city. Glasgow. You're, you're from Detroit, city. right? Detroit, yeah. Did hometown. you ever hang yourself and, and chop your head off growing up, or is it something you didn't No, 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 no. It was, it was uh, in Detroit. Well, you know, um, Detroit was a tough city and still the home of rock and roll. Yes. I still think Detroit's the home of rock yeah. and roll. Uh, it's all the bands that came out of there, the Iggy and the Stooges and the MC5 and Mitch Ryder and Seek, all those guys. I, Alice went, I went to see Iggy about a year ago down at Long Beach. Looks great, doesn't he? Fantastic. I know. It's, I don't he's, know where he gets that body. I mean, he's just, he's so, I, he's kind of preserved. He shouldn't be alive yeah. at all. I think he's almost 90% leather, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, like an old good <laughs> baseball glove, isn't it? <laughs> He like, just, bam, bam, keeps going, keeps going. But that's like going. the Stones, too. I mean, Keith yeah. Richards should have been dead years ago. <laughs> Under normal rules. Under, Under normal rules. Nobody can live through that. Of course, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's, he gets new blood every year. Yeah. You know? yeah. He, he, gets, he has a 15-year-old Swedish girl's blood in him right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do that. Do you do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Because you're looking good. I, I do it before the show every night. <laughs> could use you in the show. Yeah. <laughs> but I had a theory. There's a great horror movie there somewhere because... Where does his old blood go? Oh. It's got to go down like him. They have to drain it and dump it somewhere. So yeah. what's going on under that? You know, some monster is going to come up out of there. <laughs> you still got it going on, huh? I, you? I still love got that it. idea. How yeah. do you sleep at night with all that scary stuff <laughs> in your head? Well, you know, you get rid of it on stage. Yeah. Just, you get rid of it. But, I mean, you, you're talking about, you know, Eggy and about Keith Richards and that. You had a few run-ins yourself. You had a long time with, with the booze and the drugs, didn't you? 23 years without a drink now. Really? Oh, <laughs> Uh, everybody's allowed. Everybody's allowed so many drinks. I kind of used mine up. Yeah. <laughs> long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't miss it one bit. It's uh, you know. It's uh, if I wouldn't have stopped drinking. I, I got up in the morning. One morning on the road in a Holiday Inn, and there it was. I'd thrown up blood all over the place. Mm. And I said, Well, that looks great on stage, but it in a Holiday Inn nobody really sees it. Yeah. You know, so well. The maid. Well, yeah, yeah. It scared the, maid the and... hell out of her. She yeah. Goes, like, but then I said, this must be a sign that there's something going on. That's Usually, if you're throwing up blood, it's an indication <laughs> something's not right. <laughs> but you, did that help you? Because you didn't, you, like, when you were drinking and stuff, you would, like, pull chickens apart on stage? Or was it just chicken buckets? No, that's Colonel Sanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a horrible drunk. Yeah, I mean, that, that, <laughs> Colonel Sanders? No, he killed yeah, yeah, yeah. chickens. It was, uh, no, the, the thing about it was, was the fact that, you know, it was funny, when I went to the psychiatrist afterwards, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'd love to talk to your psychiatrist. <laughs> he was, you know, he said the funniest thing, and I, I never figured it out before. He says, well, how much do you drink on stage? I said, I never drink on stage. Well, Alice, the character, never drinks. Right. He said, yeah, okay, so let me get this straight. Alice never, you're blaming everything on Alice. Of course. Right. Yeah. But Alice never drinks. Right. I thought, you're right. When I'm on stage, I never touch a drop on stage. 
for two hours. It's the only two hours I don't drink. Right. So it was really not the monster. It was Frankenstein. It was the, the it doctor was, it, Frankenstein. It was you, was yeah. It was, yeah, was you. Me. Alice was the good Alice guy. Alice was fine, yeah. yeah. The guy cutting his head off, getting he hung. Was, he was... Pulling chickens apart. He was emotionally fine. So was, you, must have been, you must have been a whole barrel of fun. I know. Man. I was a really pleasant drunk. I was the most... Uh, probably the most... Uh, uh, I, I was an alcoholic that never missed a show, never slurred a word, never stumbled, never missed an oh, interview. Oh, you're just not applying yourself. No, no, no. I was. I, I, I could have. I was always right there. I was a you know consummate professional, most functional alcoholic, and that was the problem. Yeah, because then you don't notice that. Nobody, things, nobody yeah. saw any problem. But I was drinking a bottle of VO a day. You know. Which VO? Uh, Seagram's VO. Oh, was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All and right. then eating the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's that. There's that too. So, do you still do that on stage now when you go on tour? Do you still like hack things apart and cut your no, head off? No, no. First of all, I never killed a chicken. Right. Right. You okay. know, I never Let's killed. get that straight. Let's get now. that straight. Before we get the chicken never people kill the us. chicken. But the story is even even more bizarre than that because if you think of this, there I'm on stage and I'm, I'm playing between John Lennon and the Doors. It's right. seventy thousand people out there. And they didn't have any fowl with them at all. No chickens. They no didn't poultry. bring anything, right. which I thought was a little bit rude, really. You know? John Lennon. John Lennon was always like that. He never brought any livestock no. to any of his shows. What's no. that about? I, I, and now he's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Sam on this side and now on this side, and we're doing this last song, and the last song I used to open up a feather pillow, which would fill this room easily, one pillow. Right. And then all of a sudden, there's this chicken on the stage. Now, first of all, I didn't, it didn't strike me right then. Okay, here's a kid getting ready to come to the concert. He said, okay, I got my tickets, I got my keys, I got my chicken. <laughs> and I'm like, did the chicken have a ticket? Who, yeah, who would bring a chicken to the show? I don't know. To start with. So they, Another they, chicken, I guess. They throw, <laughs> they throw the chicken on stage, and being from Detroit, never being on a farm in my life, it had feathers, it had wings, it would fly. So I threw it back. Uh. And it didn't fly as much as it plummeted. Uh. And the audience tore the chicken apart. Oh, no, no, that's not the kicker, though. <laughs> The kicker is, is the first five rows were all in wheelchairs. So afterwards I went, that's bizarre. Yeah. And then the next day, of course, it was in the paper, Atlas Cooper kills chicken and no. throw it out. And Frank Zappa called, you know, he was producing me then. Frank's called and he said, did you kill a chicken on stage last night? I said, I don't think so. <laughs> he said, well, don't deny it. They love it. You know? That's so, rock and roll. You've got to go, Al. Yeah. It's been great to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back with author Malachi McCoy.